Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Jimmy, and today we're gonna take a look at everything that's brand new with Samsung One UI 6.1. Now, as I was researching for this video, I found everything that I was able to find that was brand new with 6.1 versus 6.0, and that's the title of today's video. But what I was finding was I was either being fooled or misled by all these different tech vlogs and tech YouTube videos of people showing off everything that's new with 6.1, when in actuality, about 70% of those features that they were showing one off that was new was actually coming from 6.0. So in today's video, I wanted to make sure that you guys weren't misled, you guys weren't fooled. Everything in this video is coming from 6.1, not 6.0. And as always, I will be placing timestamps below the video inside of the description. So this way you can see what topic we're talking about at which point in the video. Now there's one topic in today's video that I will not be covering and it's because I've already covered it a few times. I believe everybody and their mom has already exhausted this topic as well. And that is everything Galaxy AI. When you take a look at any video for Samsung One UI 6.1 or the Galaxy S24 series, Galaxy AI is usually the main topic. So basically I will not be covering this. If you want to see all of this, I will be placing links below the video inside the description of other videos going in depth of everything for Galaxy AI inside of your phone. So basically you'd have a live translate. You also have Samsung keyboard for the chat translation, style grammar. You also have the interpreter, Samsung notes, voice recorder, Samsung internet for summarize and translate, as well as photo editor. So you can completely generate an AI generated photo based off of everything that you take with the camera lenses itself. So I will be covering everything else other than the Galaxy AI features, even though it's brand new with One UI 6.1, but I believe I've already covered why I'm not, because it's already been exhausted by myself, others, and their mothers. Now with that said, if there's anything that I missed in this video today, make sure you guys write your comments below this video, because as I mentioned from before, with all of my research, I wasn't able to find anything else to add to my list that is brand new to 6.1 that wasn't a part of 6.0. Now for the first feature, as you call somebody, what you can do is you can pull down the top twice and you're gonna see an option right there for mic mode. Now I believe there was a way to change the way that your voice sounded to someone else with our past devices, but in Samsung One UI 6.1, it's on the the very top as you pull down twice and it's called mic mode. Now for this one, either you can have it as standard or voice focus. Now voice focus, what it'll do is it's going to pick up the microphones towards the bottom to make sure that my voice is coming in clear to the person who I'm having the conversation with while using the other microphones to kind of dampen that sound. So if you're inside of a bar or a concert or it's windy outside, you're driving in your vehicle and it's a louder vehicle, it will be able to dampen that outside sound and really focus on your voice down here. So the person you're you're talking to, they will have a voice focus or a clear voice as you're speaking with them. And once you choose voice focus or standard, whatever it's left on last, it'll stay there until you change it again. Feature number two is one for your customizable background for alarms. So when you set an alarm, what'll usually show up when you first wake up or maybe the time to pick up the kids from school is that if the screen is off like this, a screen will pop up and it gives you the ability to either you know snooze it or dismiss it. It's kind of a blank little screen. It's just letting you know what time it is you're able to actually fully customize this. So let's say for in the morning, you're setting one up, you put it from Monday through Friday, you put the time of where you want it to happen. Mine's basically on a sleep time. So basically at 11.50 p.m., I go into a do not disturb. My alarm goes off at 6.50 in the morning. And right here, if you scroll all the way to the bottom, you're actually able to change the background of this alarm. So with this one, what you can do is this little area, you can change what you want it to look like. Also, you can go to the background. So your alarm might look something like this. So you might have this one right here as featured. You know, you might even have one of these. You have a couple different, you know, options for a video. But as you go inside of your gallery, you can go through and you can change any picture or video. So I actually have two of them set up. So this is what my alarm looks like when I wake up. Here's my snooze. Here's also my X to basically dismiss it. And then you hit on done. And then this is what you will be able to be greeted with in the morning rather than something that's just boring and lame. So here's another example of this one right here. So this one's gonna be different because I actually have a video set up. So yeah, you can either set a photo or video. You can even trim the video if you would like. This is where your snooze is at. This is where your cancel is at or your dismiss. If there was sound with this video, you can actually have it have that sound as well. But I'd rather just the alarm go off. I always have my phone and vibrate anyways. 
And then I also have that little vibrate sound coming off as well. So it's even a little bit louder. So it's pretty nice that you can just go through your full entire, you know, gallery. You could put in photo, you could put in video, and it's just a way to kind of enhance how your alarm screen looks. Feature number three is a new way of clipping an image and moving it to another photo. Now, what you're able to do in 6.0 is if you're able to press and hold on an image, basically once you kind of have them there, you can save them as a sticker or even save as an image. Then you go to the next photo and then that is where you'd want to edit and then add that photo in. So what they did in 6.1 was they made it much easier. So I press and hold, here is my person, this is my object, this is what I wanna do. And down over here, I can just switch the different photo and literally drag and drop it onto the next photo that you would like to do. So this way, if I, if this makes sense and this is where I want to, you know, place in this image, then I'm able to do this. So it makes it so much easier because the other way is you would have to save it, then go here, then hit the edit. And then you have to go here, then you have to go to stickers and then you add them in. So it's just a way of saving so much more time just by doing a press and hold, swiping, drag and drop. Now I do wanna show you the other way that's brand new in 6.1 if you guys wanna do this one as well. So if you don't want to scroll along here or maybe the image is not readily available, this is where you just hit on copy. And then once you copy it, then you're able to move over to the image, press and hold where you want it to go. You're gonna hit on paste, he'll come right over here, and then you just move it again where you want it to be in the photo. So pretty much it's just a way that you can just do a simple copy and paste to bring it over, or you can use two fingers to actually select to do the drag and drop. Feature number four is one that you might want to turn on. This is gonna be inside of settings. And once you go inside of settings, you go inside of advanced features, and then inside of advanced features, you tap on labs. And then inside of labs, you have this option right here called photo ambient wallpaper. So once you turn this one on, what will happen is that whatever wallpaper you're using on the lock screen will actually change based on the time and the weather. So once you have this one turned on, then what you wanna do is press and hold anywhere on the screen that's empty. You tap on wallpaper and style. Go right here to change wallpapers. And now inside of creative, instead of just generative, which generative has been there from before, this is where you can create something based off of AI. So if I wanna choose this one, I could try, you know, uh, abstract indigo with distant mountain range. I can switch it to a foggy swamp with, instead of ice, I can do coral reefs so that I can use generate. So AI is right here. It's kind of been updated. It's been changed. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You also have several different outcomes of what you chose. But what you can do right next to that generative is right here. Here is photo ambient, which is what you just turned on. So for this one, this is the original photo. And you can see here that there's snow coming down or it might be very bright out. So if I wanted to try this out, I pretty much put in that image of my Jeep. And so what it's going to look like is let's say I go right here and this is what I have set up. Now, what's gonna happen is it's going to load, and then here's that little play button. So this is what it's going to look like once you choose a photo. It's gonna give you a couple different examples. So if it's raining outside, it'll actually rain in the photo. If it is snowing, it's gonna snow in the photo. And if it's sunny outside, you'll actually see, you know, kind of like a little glare that'll happen. So here's what it looks like right now. There should be a couple different sun flares, or at least there was sun flares earlier today when it was sunny outside. Right now it's getting dark out, so I guess it's kind of a darker image, which technically it is. But beforehand I saw little glimmers of sun come through and that's what it was able to do um, when it was all sunny outside. Feature number five and feature number six, I'm gonna kind of put them together. We're gonna go inside of our gallery. We're gonna take a look at this video. Now, feature number five is called instant slow-mo. It's a way that you're able to preview what it would look like if you switched it into slow-mo at that time. All you have to do is watch a video and press and hold it with your finger. Now, if you actually want to edit it, you hit on this little edit button. Here's feature number six. This is where you can adjust the speed and you have one eighth, one fourth, one half, the full normal one X and two X. So let's say that we wanted to do two X and I want it to kind of go over here. I don't need it really for the full entire video. I'm gonna to go to about right, uh, let's go to about right here. Because what you can do is you can press you can break it up. And this one over here, I want it to stay at 2x, but this one, I want it to be at 1 4th. And you can also move these around a little bit so there's a little bit of a breakup right there. So now you have a 2x, you have a 1 4th, and everything else is the normal same speed. So if we were to move this to the very front, you'd be able to watch it pretty much the masterpiece. Here's a regular speed, here's two times the speed, no big deal. Now we're gonna move right over here into that 1 4th. 
And so it's just a really nice way that with one pretty much edit, you're able to find an area that you would like to edit up. You can put it at a couple different speeds if you would like. And then you also have another third speed, which is regular pace. Feature number seven is battery protection. So there's a few different ways that you can protect your battery as you're charging it, especially if you're one of those who charges your phone at night. Now I've already covered this a few times, but like I said in today's video, it's everything that's brand new in 6.1, not anything that was a part of 6.0. So all you have to do is inside settings, you go inside of battery and inside of battery, you have this option right here called battery protection. So what you're able to do here is you have three different options. So maximum is where your battery will stop charging when it hits 80%. So this is actually something that I did with my Galaxy S23 Ultra for about six months. This is all I've done. I only made it go to 80% and that's it. I didn't make it do the full battery cycle of going all the way up to 100. And then you also have this option right here that's brand new in 6.1 called adaptive. So what this will do is it'll use maximum while you're asleep. So it'll go up to 80%. And then it's going to switch to basic before you wake up. So then this time what's gonna happen is as you're sleeping, it goes up to 80%, it kind of stays there. And then as it knows when you're supposed to wake up, beforehand it'll start charging it up so it's at 100 by the time your alarm goes off. So it will actually learn off of your usage patterns. So here's basic. So when your battery is charged to 100%, the charging will stop until the battery level drops down to 95, and then it'll start charging again to 100%. So adaptive is perfect. If you're sleeping, you're able to charge it up to 80%. It knows you're gonna be sleeping for quite a few, you know, maybe a couple more hours. And then right before it knows that you're gonna wake up, it's gonna start charging probably about 40 minutes, maybe 30 minutes before you start waking up. It's gonna go up to 100%. So I can actually show you this in action. If I was to head right over here, and let's say, that I moved over into this one right over here, you can see that it started charging up to 100%. It dropped down and then went right back up right as I was waking up. So it's pretty nice that you can actually see that little concave portion right there. But all these other ones right up over here, so this one was a full line, this one was a full line, this one was also a full line. That's because it didn't learn my sleep patterns yet. It takes about seven days in order for it to actually do this. Feature number eight, and it's also the very last feature of today's video, is going to be the brand new section for your lock screen widgets. So there's a few different widgets you can put inside of here. I put in pretty much a battery widget as well as my Samsung health widget. Now, originally it would be the time and then notifications. Now it's time, widgets, and then notifications. If you wanted to see all of your lock screen widgets from beforehand, you'd have to tap on the time. And then this is pretty much where all the widgets were kind of hidden. And then you can also go through settings. You can move these around. You can edit them. You can choose, you know, choose what you want to be there. You can change the order of them. So instead of you having to go into another screen for those widgets, they're just going to be right there as a glance. So I can tap on one of these, unlock my phone, and it's going to take me inside of that application. So in order for you to make this change, one of the things you can actually do is on the lock screen, you can press and hold, and then you're able to unlock it. So then you can make your edits. Now, if you don't have the option for a press and hold on the lock screen, there's actually a setting that you'd have to turn on for this one. But I believe out of the box, it should actually be there. So with this one, all you have to do is you can tap right there. You can delete one of these and you can add in one of these others. So you have battery, calendar, clock, reminder, Samsung health and weather. So you can choose any of these widgets that's inside of here. You can put them on the very top. So this way you can have a little glance of what they're going to look like. They're kind of shaped a little bit different. You also have like moon phase, which is pretty sweet. That wasn't really there from before. So if I don't want to have, you know, maybe Samsung health, I can have my battery widget and then the moon phase. Or I could do moon phase and then my Samsung health right up over there. So it's pretty nice that you can have additional things that goes onto the lock screen that really doesn't take up too much space. It's actually a very welcomed thing for me because right underneath there, if I do have notifications, they'll still pop up. But everything looks, uh, I think, fantastic for the lock screen. So that's everything that I wanted to share in today's video. I didn't want you guys to be fooled or misled by other videos if you were trying to see what was brand new with 6.1. This is literally every single thing that's brand new with Samsung One UI 6.1. I'm not giving you anything from 6.0. And again, don't forget, the only thing I didn't share was everything with Galaxy AI. Just because I have extensive videos already talking about everything with Galaxy AI, along with anybody else who has created videos for the Galaxy S24. I wanted to cover everything else that pretty much no one else has been doing. So hopefully you guys appreciated this video. If you do, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe on the very bottom left-hand side. And if you like this video, then more than likely you'll also like this video. And I'll see you guys later.